Okay. Oscar Romeo for India Sierra Sierra. Do you copy Sierra Papa 5 Zulu Bravo? Witamy na dachu budynku E Szkoły Wyższej imienia Pawła Włodkowica. Takie mamy tutaj widoki. O, a stamtąd przyjdą główni bohaterowie wydarzenia, czyli młodzież, która zada pytania. A oto i anteny, które będą zaprzęgnięte do tego wydarzenia. To jest antena zapasowa. 5 ósmych o długości elektrycznej 5 ósmych fali na pasmo dwumetrowe i wycelowana w tej chwili w niebo antena Jagi w prawoskrętnej polaryzacji także na pasmo dwumetrowe. Zaraz zobaczymy jak ten główny system antenowy pracuje, obraca się i śledzi położenie Międzynarodowej Stacji Kosmicznej. Anteny są sterowane automatycznie przez program komputerowy Orbitron autorstwa Sebastiana Stofa, toruńskiego pasjonata badania przestrzeni kosmicznej. Podłączony jest do urządzenia, do sterownika, który to sterownik podaje napięcie i impulsy do rotora. Rotor to to czarne urządzenie w środku, które powoduje, że antena może wykonywać obrót dookoła i w górę i w dół. I ta antena, którą teraz widzimy jest właśnie tą główną anteną wykorzystywaną do naszej łączności. Jak spojrzycie Państwo tutaj na ten ekran yy, za mną, yy, mamy taki krzyżyk i napis SP500BA. To jest nasza lokalizacja, no to nie trudno zgadnąć, że gdzieś w środku Europy się znajdujemy. Yy, taka kreseczka w kształcie w góry i doliny to jest trajektoria, po której będzie, czy po której porusza się orbita, po której porusza się Międzynarodowa Stacja Kosmiczna. I przechodzimy od razu do zadawania pytań. Pytań jest 20. Okienko, to tak zwane okienko, na które, które mamy do wykorzystania, to jest tylko 10 minut. Około 10, kilkanaście minut, 10, no maks, maksymalnie kilkanaście minut od momentu, w którym się uda nawiązać łączność, do momentu, w którym tę łączność utracimy. Zobaczcie Państwo, jak to się szybko porusza. Jeszcze chwilę temu stacja była nad oceanem, większą chwilę temu była gdzieś tam nad Ameryką Południową, a za chwilę, za chwilę doleci do nas. For India Sierra Sierra, this is Sierra Papa 5, Zulu Bravo Alpha, do you copy over? Oscar Romeo 4, India, Sierra, Sierra, this is Sierra Papa 5, Zulu, Bravo, Alpha, do you copy, over. Oscar Romeo 4, India, Sierra, Sierra, this is Sierra Papa 5, Zulu, Bravo, Alpha, do you copy? Hello, my my next question. What do you eat? Over. How many people are there with you? How many could be on the ISS? Jacob, I think the first question is, what do we eat? We eat a lot of food that is uh, packaged in packages and already um, can stay for a long time. Gets preserved for a long time. Uh, or we have rehydrated food, so we add water and then and then it's uh, great food. It's all a little bit boring to eat the same thing all the time, but it's food. We come to space for other reasons. Over. Hello, my name is Marjorie. How do you prepare my functions on the ISS? What was the biggest one? Over. Okay, um, Masai, uh, how do we repair malfunctions and what's the biggest one? The biggest thing that can happen is if we uh, lose our ability to cool the instruments and the equipment that helps the space station run. And all that cooling happens outside the space station 
And so sometimes we have to go out and um, if, if that cooling breaks, we'd have to go out and change the pump, just like they did this past summer. So we do that doing a spacewalk over. I ha Rafael, I have not seen a UFO yet, and I think we might have missed a McAvage question how many people are here and how many can be here. We could have a, a lot of people here, I would say uh, about 15 uh, when a shuttle mission comes. But usually we have six people on board the ISS. Right now, only three because the other crew undocked just yesterday over. <laughs> Get, uh, um, I like to play music. I play the flute. And I think maybe today on YouTube you can find a video that I made for St. Patrick's Day. I have some Irish flutes here in space with me over. <laughs> Alessandra, I, we can see um, the same planets that you can see, um, but maybe just a little bit um, brighter. I'm, I forget which ones we can see right now, but they're very bright in the sky, and I love to look out. Over. Laura, it's a very important question. You know, we, down on the Earth, the plants help us recycle our air, but up here, we have some uh, filters, and what they do is they take out the carbon dioxide that, ha that we make when we breathe. When we breathe out, carbon dioxide comes out too, and we have filters that take that out of the air, and then it's clean enough for us to breathe. Over. Why did you choose this job? Over. I, I am a scientist first. I'm a chemist, and I love what I do in the laboratory, but I also like a little bit of adventure, and, uh, and I, I believe that we should be exploring the universe. So that's why I chose the astronaut job. Over. I'm in the Air Force, but I don't know anything about Area 51. I think it's really interesting for us to think about what other kinds of people and beings are out in the universe, and I think we should go find them. So study hard in school so that you can be part of the, uh, the team that goes and finds them. Over. Rosa, I have a sleeping bag, and it's, it's tied to the wall so that I don't float around the space station at night. And I have a little cabin about as big as my sleeping bag that I sleep in. Over. Matthias, uh, the ISS is about the inside of two very large airplanes, like two 747s. So inside it's very big, but we're in compartments, almost like train cars, one after the other. Over. Well, there has to be a toilet because we have to go to the bathroom just like you. And in fact, when the toilet breaks, it becomes a very bad situation because we know we have to store that waste somewhere. So we take very good care of the toilet. Over. Well, it really is very comfortable. I love floating around. I love learning to work in a microgravity environment. And uh, there's really nothing bad about being in space. It's great. Over. I have a son who's 10 and a very nice husband, and I miss them very much. I'd like to see them, but I will see them in two months when it's my turn to come home. Over. <laughs> Alessandra, I love to look at the Earth. I like to look at the horizon so I see the curve of the Earth, and I remember I'm in a spaceship. And I love to look down, and, and I can see so much about what's going on in the Earth. I feel very curious. Over. <laughs> Ludvika, one of the ways is to learn everything I can about my job. And I think that you're doing that right now by asking questions of people like me. And I think it's great that you are very curious. Also, we practice all of the things that we might have to do if there's an emergency, and that's really important training. Over. <laughs> On the Earth, it's a little difficult because they're usually very heavy. Um, for the space shuttle, our suits and our parachutes weigh about, uh, let's see, about 40 kilograms. Um, and a little bit less for the Russian suit. And so it's heavy on the Earth, but in space, it's no problem. But really, in the space station, we just wear regular clothes. Over. <laughs> Alessandra, sometimes I have great responsibility to, you know, maybe, for example, catching uh, the Japanese supply ship with the robotic arm. And, you know, I can be worried that I will make a mistake and I will, you know, not catch the Japanese supply ship. And everyone would think that was very bad, including me. And so what I do is I make sure I've done all the training, all the practicing that is necessary for my job. And if I know I've done my best to be ready, then I don't have to worry about making a mistake. I just do my best. And I think that can work for you, too. Over. Piotr, right now, I would really love to stay up here for a really long time, and I don't want to come home yet. 
But uh, I think we'll come home in the middle of May, and I'll come home on a Soyuz uh, down to, and I'll land in Kazakhstan. Over. And in case uh, you can hear me, um, for photos of the ISS, the best way to get photos is going to be to go to the web, the NASA website, and you can find great photos of Poland. And also I wish to send greetings from my Russian teacher who comes from Poland, uh, Vaslav Mucha. Um, he's, from, uh, he's from Poland as well. So I'm very glad to talk to you today and glad, glad that you have such good questions. Over and out from Oscar Romeo for ISS. Cel jest przede wszystkim edukacyjny, czy zainteresowanie młodzieży tym, co dzieje się we wszechświecie. Dzisiaj wiedza ogólna młodego człowieka, takiego troszkę młodszego, ciałem a duchem nieco starszego czy odwrotnie, jest niepełną wiedzą, jeśli nie wie choć trochę na temat tego, co dzieje się wokół Ziemi. Kiedyś ograniczało się, yy, ograniczało się to do wiedzy na temat krążących wokół Słońca planet. Jeszcze wcześniej myśleliśmy, że to Słońce krąży wokół Ziemi, a dzisiaj okazuje się, że wcale nie, tylko krążymy jako jedna z planet wokół naszej gwiazdy, a wokół naszej planety krążą różne obiekty. Jednym z takich obiektów jest Międzynarodowa Stacja Kosmiczna, Jednym z wielu. To, co tam widzimy teraz na sali obok, to jest prezentacja tylko pewnego wycinka rzeczywistości krążącej, użytecznej rzeczywistości krążącej wokół Ziemi na orbitach okołoziemskich. Codziennie z tego korzystamy. GPS-y, telefony, telewizja satelitarna, a my amatorzy robimy z tego użytek, radioamatorzy robimy z tego użytek no nie chciałbym powiedzieć zabawowy czy rozrywkowy, bo no jest to na pewno taki aspekt ludyczny tutaj, ale także, ale także no są to możliwości, które można wykorzystać w wielu sytuacjach kryzysowych.